How is everybody doing today? I hope you guys have your coffee. You guys are ready to go. It's Monday. I hope you guys are absolutely excited for a fantastic week. How is everybody doing? I see everybody's in chat. I know we're going to have a great time. Hi, Shauna. Hi, Tim. Hi, Steve. Welcome, welcome. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to get started in Illustrator. We're going to be building a brand kit really a brand and then we're going to build a brand toolkit for everybody so at the end of it you'll kind of have like your logo some patterns some illustration stuff nah we won't have time for that so we're going to do colors type lockups all those good things that you might need to turn over to a client and then at the end of it we'll show you how to build it in illustrator as like a final deliverable to turn into your clients or whatever uh, we're not going to do it in indesign because i want to show you guys how i do it in illustrator um, obviously Whenever I turn it into a client, I typically use um, InDesign, but I think you can do it all in Illustrator. So if you don't want to get too complicated with a new software, we're just going to work in Illustrator today. Tim, a bit on the quiet side though. Okay, I'm going to turn it up. I got it dialed. We're good. Hi all, no image, no sound. What? Oh no. Carol, you might have to refresh just in case. So can you guys hear me better now? Is this better? Make sure refresh. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so this project essentially started from me looking at my portfolio and saying, you know what? Oh my gosh, Steve, you're from the Dimension Streams. That's true. We did it one Illustrator stream before the Dimin or since the last time, and that was about like doing a coffee badge and logo and stuff. So today we're going to be working on a luxury flower brand so essentially i looked at my work and i said okay what is my portfolio telling me right now and what do i want to do that separates it from my normal work so i looked at it and said i do a lot of serif typeface stuff a lot of vibrant bright colors so what i wanted to do was essentially contrast all these very very bright colors that i typically do in my work and also get away from doing uh sans serif typefaces i do it a lot i like how they stack it works really well for me but I feel like that makes me look like a one trick pony. And I really wanna show the world that I'm not just one-sided or one-faceted. So what we're gonna do is a luxury um, flower brand. And we're gonna to try to contrast what I currently have. So I'm gonna do darker, richer colors, kind of similar to like Atticus uh, with the serif typeface and try to do something that's like a little bit less um, like off trend or maybe on trend but off of like what you would historically think about for a flower brand if you were to go down the street and stuff uh so we're gonna open up illustrator boom pal if you're following along at home this is what we're doing uh open up illustrator you're gonna have a white square in the middle of your screen that's not very helpful for whenever i do a like brand design project or, or new logo or anything so you're gonna press command shift h if you're working on a mac and you're gonna open up the artboard so that everything is just a gigantic white screen for you. All right, so I've kind of got like a grocery cart list here in the corner, the top left corner of my artboard or screen space. And I really wanna get done today. I wanna to have all these options. I've got naming, logo, vertical, horizontal, badge, and pattern. So today we only have an hour together. Uh, so, we don't have a brand toolkit download file today, Jose, but I will build one for tomorrow for you to have. Since we're not gonna be doing the brand toolkit today, we will be doing it tomorrow. So today we're just gonna show you how I would go through building naming, logo, ho vertical, horizontal, different versions of it, badge and patterns today. So we only have an hour today and an hour tomorrow. So that's already a really, really tight schedule for building a whole um, like brand essentially. Uh, 
Camilla asks, what is the command? Only a sad face, yeah, I know, only an hour. Uh, Camilla asks, what is the command? The command is Command-Shift-H, and that will take you away from your artboard and open up the screen real estate. Uh, and you can do that, and you can just, you know, Shift-O if you need to make, you know, multiple different artboards and stuff, but right now we're not worrying about how we're gonna present anything, so Command-Shift-H, and we're gonna start working in the typeface itself. So what I did for this project, since I wanna do a flower brand, I don't really know anything about flowers. So I started looking at what are flower parts and what's the anatomy of a flower. And so essentially, I decided that I want to use perianth. Uh, there's a part of a flower also called a stigma. And I thought that was cool, especially from like the Greek backgrounds of it. But stigma also has a negative connotation. So what I did was, this is my favorite perianth. And so I want to just work that into this logo. Since it's not a real client, it doesn't have to be anything super fancy. Uh, but I found a beautiful typeface earlier called Casta, I believe. So I'm going to take this typeface. I'm going to type Casta. It's a beautiful variable font. So if any of you have ever had a variable font, you have this beautiful tool within Illustrator. You can stretch it out in the widths and it'll dynamically shift and change. You can change the width of the letters. It's really, really great to work with. Shifts, slants, all these good things. Uh, it really gives you a lot of customization. So variable fonts are really coming up in the world right now. Uh, companies like Dropbox redid their, their brand system and started using variable typefaces. So it's important to kind of look at what the world is doing. Variable typefaces give you a lot of really great bleh, abilities within customizing your type. So for this type, I wanted to start focusing on, you know, its variability and what are the really great elements. Within this, when I saw this typeface, I thought uh, it could translate really well into some like geometric patterns and into some like floral elements and things that we might want to leverage for like patterns and things like that. Yeah, it's kind of Art Nouveau-ish, yeah. it's. I like that it's a, a serif typeface, but it also is a little bit brutalist, especially when you start looking at this as like headlines or paragraphs or poster designs or anything like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this perianth and I'm gonna, looking at my portfolio, I know that I use a lot of really bold letters throughout for logo types and stuff. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually make a narrow, make it a little bit thinner, lean more into like the elegant side of things a little bit. Uh, I think this is okay. A great thing about working in Illustrator is we have a lot that we can explore really quickly. And pixels are cheap and free. All right, so what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna start, I'm gonna use option left or option right on the PC it's alt and you can actually just adjust the kerning uh, by just pounding the, the the left and right keys with alt or option and knowing I kind of want something probably tighter so that's feeling nicer so you can already see how much better the typeface looks by just pushing the letters a little bit closer together so I've got these options here. This typeface also has a couple of different other letters that have alternative characters. So you can see like the N has this kind of, the A has this kind of slanted version, also has an upright version. It's kind of nice. So you can adjust things how you want it. I might I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that yet. I kind of like how it goes towards the, the T, but we'll see. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just duplicate this line again because we already got the kerning the way we want. And what I'm gonna do is actually create outlines. Let me just see if there's any other interesting characters. So what I can also do, I think there might be, we go to open type controls and see if there's any, yep, okay. so. In here, if you go to your Command T, it'll bring up your type selection. If you open up your open type uh, drawer, essentially is what it's called, I guess, uh, you can look at discretionary ligatures. And then what I'll do is if there's like 
a double T's or a TI or an RI. Sometimes they'll have like custom lig ligatures that would go with it. And you can see it, by me clicking that, it says, oh, there's a nice little R overhang on the I. And so it'll just do that for you. But I don't like their version as much as I would want for myself. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually just going to create my own outlines of this type. And now you won't be able to adjust your typefaces. So just be careful whenever you do this that you want to have a working type also selected that you already have kind of built and saved somewhere in the artboard just so you aren't doing anything destructive. Oops, command shift H. All right, so I'm going to actually ungroup. So whenever you do an outline, everything's going to be grouped together. You don't want it to be grouped together for this. So you're going to, or if you want it to be grouped together, you can and just kind of double click into each individual. But I prefer to just ungroup it by doing command shift G and I'll ungroup everything. So now that each letter is its own. So there's a couple things off the gate that I like, but I don't necessarily like. So I love the the geometric ends on each of the letters. I think that's really cool. I think this R itself, I can take this little bit here and Command C, Command V. And now I've got this kind of interesting like R overhang. But this R for me like could be a really cool uh, like flower almost. You can kind of build your own flowers off of this. I could take the the triangle shape at the top and just remove this bottom section here. Sorry, delete. Maybe there is an opportunity. Ah, there might be an opportunity here. Let me close the end paths here. There might be something that we can play with. Within this, that could become a flower of some sort. I'm going to group it and then I'm going to flip it horizontally, reflect vertical. I don't know yet. We'll keep that for later, but that's kind of an interesting concept. All right, so what I'm looking at with the type is I don't necessarily like that T would work well as a flower stem. It would. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. That could work really well. And so what you're going to look at is I, so I, I like that the baseline works really well for just like being even across. So if you look at this right now, that's the baseline. And I think that's fine for like paragraphs and type and things like that. But I kind of want the P descender to go down below the baseline. So what I'm doing is just selecting with by pressing A. I'm going to take the direct select tool. Or you can just take the white arrow here. And I'm going to grab it. And I'm just going to pull it down below the baseline. And right now we're just doing it for like placement. So we don't need to be perfect or really exact with it. But what I'm going to do is essentially take this same kind of concept, taking the A, the A selection, or sorry, by pressing A and clicking the direct selection tool, we have like options here to start messing with the, the letters shapes themselves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull down the I just a little bit. I'm not sure if I want it to be super far below the A or not. I'm gonna shorten this stroke or lower the width. So this is where the I'm looking and I'm trying to see where the like letters. Okay, so this is kind of where the E goes to. So I want to, I'm going to lock the, the guide. Actually, I can just make this a guide. So by me going in, taking this line, I can just say make guides and now it's a guide. So now whenever you press command um, ellipses, uh, you can see the guide. So what I'm going to do is actually take my direct selection tool again. I'm going to raise this section to be right at that point where the E is. So we have a horizontal motif going all the way through the logo type. All right, so what I'm going to do here is now take the R. Actually, so I liked the idea that they had with the, uh, the custom ligature, but I didn't like the execution of it as much. So what I'm going to do 
Let's see here. I'm actually curious. I'm going to press Command R. That's going to bring up the rulers. So you can see that on the top and side now of my screen. How it kind of frames it now. So now I can pull in my own guides. So I'm actually going to grab this. So this line kind of goes throughout. You see it crosses across the R to the N to the T. And then you have certain characters like the ends, the A's, the curves kind of have to go over it or else it looks kind of wonky. Um, which means, we'll see. I'm not sure how I want to fix this R yet. What I'm going to do is going to take the, I'm going to save this again, the little square. I'm going to save that for later. Maybe I'll make a pattern out of that. I'm going to see how this might look. I'm going to actually pull this out by Command X, Command F. So I'm pasting it in front of now. And that will allow me to have it kind of working in front and away from this grouped eye. And so what I'm going to do is actually turn this around. But as you can see, I'm having a hard time seeing how I want to line this up. Right? It's kind of looking weird. So what I'm going to do is press Command Y. And it's going to take me into the outline mode. And so now exactly, I know exactly where my elements of my letters are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to keep this square as much as close to the original as possible. But I want to get this tight. I want to get this corner at the top and the corner at the bottom to match. And I have to stretch it a little bit to make that happen. Boop. There we go. And so that's pretty good. I want to just do a small little rotation. And I'm just going to slide this over. And I'm just doing a shift drag just to make it move in a perfect straight line across or up and down. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to rotate ever so slightly. Cool. Me. Just zooming around my artboard, moving things around. All right, cool. So what we can do now is go back to outline, away from outline mode. We can see, OK, does this look right? Does it not feel right? Maybe I need to just remove that left anchor point. So I'm going to duplicate this down below just to quickly see what the difference could be. And remove the guides. So right now, we've kind of got this eye, but it, the eye is feeling too high to me right now. So actually, or there's not enough space right now within this kind of area. It's starting to feel maybe like an N versus an RI. So what I'm going to do is actually just move this over so it will stay on the same guidelines. So you can kind of see that there. All right, so what I'm going to do, good morning, Jennifer. How are you doing today? Welcome, Megan. First time watching Adobe Live? Live? Wow. <laughs> welcome, welcome. All right, so what we've got here, I'm going to take the R. I'm actually going to direct select the R up. I'm going to grab these little anchor points so that they're not off behind. And I'm going to actually bring it up. And I think, unlike the the normal typeface, I feel like I might, the stock typeface, I feel like, looks really good because it's all kind of built on those horizontal guides. I think I'm going to try to contrast that and break the guides up a bit. Uh, so I'm going to move this. I'm just going to delete that. So now we've got kind of like a more sharp edge there. Maybe that's OK. All right. So there's no right or wrong answers yet. We're still just fiddling around. We're trying to move as quickly as possible because we only have an hour today. But I'm going to just start kerning every individual letter, try to get them a little bit closer to each other. And we're going to leave the A, the I out there a little bit. 
uh, and move over to A. And then I'm going to move over these elements. And looking at these, the A, the N, and the E, they're all kind of on the same grid line. The T right now is kind of on its own thing. And so what I might do is try to see what, this is my first time here, you're so excited. Welcome, Alex, welcome, welcome. Hope you guys are having fun. All right, oh no, snap, get back in there, all right. So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna make a guide here real quick for the top of the R. I'm gonna try to see if there's any possibility of moving this T up without breaking completely. I'm almost tempted to try to like, I'm gonna try to move the H stem up as well to match. I don't know if that's the right move or not, but we're just exploring and trying stuff right now. Let me actually just move this over so I'm not looking at it next to everything else and I just want to kind of like zoom out a little bit and see if it's working or not. Ah, uh, it could be. Let's see. I want. I'm curious if I brought the T down below the. So if I kept that there, maybe I move this over. We. A lot of your time making a logo is going to be experimenting and trying things. Obviously, we could have just used the typeface by itself, but then that's kind of like not original and not very exciting. So make sure whenever you're doing this stuff, just be open-minded, see what's working for you, try things out. Later on, you can get really, really nitpicky with it. Like um, when I did the Atticus project here, I essentially found a typeface that I liked as a starting point, and then I rebuilt all the letters within it to kind of have similar kind of anchor points, similar base, actually the same base across each letter point, so that consistent geometric shapes the whole way across. Uh, so you can get really, really granular, you can really, really finesse everything, but right now in your current position, like while you're working through this stuff, just be open, try things, see what what's speaking to you. I'm going to see if the type, I think we're getting there. I just want to move this over just slightly. I want to make sure the kerning is feeling balanced. I think the T and the H probably could be moved over a bit. It's pretty. Thank you, Biola. Appreciate it, appreciate it. All right, let's see, uh, I think, what do you guys think? What do you think, chat? Should we move on to doing a little, like a badge real quick? Um, I think it's looking pretty good. I'm trying to look and see if it looks, un if it's zoomed out, maybe the R needs to move over just slightly. All right, let's move it over just like one pixel just to see. I'm trying to also like worry about readability, but maybe I don't need to as much. Uh, I think it's all right. All right, so what we're gonna do, the lowered T was nice. You liked it, Carol? I'm not sure. Maybe it's okay. Let me, let me pull it back. bring back the lower T. Just bring it to the eye level. I'm tempted to maybe like remove the spike on it. So what I'm going to do is actually just take the P 
and then I'm just gonna the press P and get your pin tool out. And then there we go. Uh, mess with these anchor points really, really quickly. I don't know why this starts to feel like, like an Evanescence logo or something. Badges, we don't need, do we need some stinking badges? I think we do. Let's watch this. Feels a little dark. Yeah, it's kind of dark. I like that it's like not a typical like flower shop. All right, so what we're gonna do here, make a little badge. All right, so I'm gonna grab, even Lorem Mipson looks cool. Maybe that's what we need, just Lorem. I really wanna use this O for something. It's so cool. Like that's, that's so cool. Maybe that's what, we'll, maybe we'll, let's, I'm onto something chat. Thank you, chat. All right, I'm gonna do a very thin O. I'm gonna take that O out. I'm gonna use this O instead of just a normal, like, instead of a normal circle, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a monogram real quick. I'm gonna use this O as the, oh my goodness, what am I doing? All right. I press my type tool, just P, F. But I actually, I need to, I'm going to highlight these letters. I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool and it will click on here and it's going to pull the exact same typeface from uh, the kind of open type working already. Hey Alex, how do you get inspiration? I get inspiration everywhere. I don't know, everywhere. Uh, but I love looking on Behance to see what people are doing. Uh, but, you know, going outside, seeing what posters, you know, New York is a great place for that. I live in Portland though. So whatever you can see just around you, like how people are doing type, how people are exploring things, what are they doing that's really interesting? How does it make you feel? Things like that, like, and then start synthesizing that information to build a something that makes you happy. So what I'm gonna do is this little monogram. Maybe it feels like the F is hooking in there. Maybe the P is now too long. So maybe I need to just break these apart on group. I do need to find out more about variable fonts. You should definitely, yeah, Sean's like, outside, no. All right, going outside's tough right now, but, but yeah, just anywhere, like books, movies, TV shows. There's like interesting things, video games, like, you can find a lot of inspiration anywhere. Just gotta kind of be like open, open to accepting it. So it kind of is feeling pretty good there. Uh, I'm curious now. So if I just create an outline of this type, just move this over, bing pow. I'm gonna pull this out, delete that. But that's kind of feeling wonky. What is this outside? Uh, you know, the thing that you put like put on a virtual headset, and then you can like go see what the outside looks like without having to leave. It's like Ready Player One. It's fine. You don't need to go outside. Uh, but so that's getting kind of interesting. The like inside space feeling pretty good with it. What I think. I am struggling with on that is it feels so heavy compared to the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is actually open up this compound path. And what I'm going to do is double click the inside layer area. Does anyone remember PF flyers? I do not. Uh, what fonts do you prefer, sir? Varen asks. Varen, I don't know. I mean, it really depends on the, the, the project I'm working on. Each typeface kind of has its own like feeling that I might be trying to capture for a client or a project so it really just depends i personally find myself uh using a lot of sans serif typefaces that are like really bold and that can typically stack really well on top of each other so what i was thinking for this was to leverage that o there's elements of the o still in there it's not completely perfect anymore uh because I kind of shrunk the inside or enlarged the inside. 
we're gonna it's a little wonky but anyway so we can look at it compared to a normal circle monogram we could do just an ellipse shift x to sh change really quickly between fill and stroke alex are you on a mac or pc i am on a mac but i also have a pc because i like my video games but i am working on a mac right now so what i'm doing is just taking a perfect ellipse and seeing okay how does this look in a circle and it looks like it needs to be up just bumped up a little bit but that's like kind of too clean it almost needs this kind of wonkier version so what we can do is actually duplicate this over a little bit more and then we can go to this stroke uh, characteristics section uh, so you can go basic oh sorry uh, to the stroke characteristics up here and then you can change what they look like so you can change if it's wobbly and all that good stuff or does it look like so let me click it. So you just recycle through it and you can kind of see what each one does. So, uh, so I think probably the one on the, this one here is probably the strongest so far. So what I'm gonna do, because I know we're, we only have 30 minutes left, I wanna see what this might look like. We're gonna do a pattern very quickly, but really what I'm trying to see is how this stuff might look in like a collateral piece. So I grabbed this from Unsplash. I grabbed a bunch of little mockups from Unsplash the other day for this project, but what you can do is just throw in. That's a great way to do this stuff for like a client project. Way to like help them visualize their brand. And then we can grab this logo. I can throw it in the bottom. And we'll do just Lauren Ipsen. Lauren Ipsen. Grab it real quick. All right, what I'm going to do here is actually just grab the typeface that we already have been using. Try text warp once. What do you mean? Is this for a real client? No, this is not. This is just a portfolio piece that I felt I needed to kind of balance out some of my, my work. So there's no right or wrong for this. It's just kind of like, what does my portfolio not have and how do I build it to make it, you know, it's important to make the work that you want the world to see in your portfolio. Like if you're looking for a job anywhere, like build the work that you want to do for the rest of your life or else you're going to have a hard time convincing people that you can do that work. And it doesn't have to be for the rest of your life, but what you want to do at that moment will help you a lot. All right, it's a white typeface right now. I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna turn off all the caps. The uh, spacing is way too crazy right now. And yes, you probably don't wanna use 72 typeface for this stuff, but. But this is just really quickly to just kind of see what a, a letter might look like great way to help kind of show clients how their brains kind of lives in life by using like mock-ups making your little mock-ups and things but I mean like that's looking pretty nice you could see that like being a thing you know it's looking good Shauna says I like your mo lock monogram lockup my dude thank you yeah you like the bold version of the David says he likes the bold version of the logo thank you uh, I mean I think I, I just do so many bold, like essentially the whole project is just to say, 
like don't do what I normally do for every single project, right? So if that's the case, I do so many bold logos already that I wanted to do something a little bit lighter. I'm just trying to contrast what I normally do. And part of that is also just coming out of like my own comfort zone as a creative. It's like if I'm used to doing one thing all the time, then I'm not really growing or learning. So I want to, I'm okay with trying to fail. And if nobody likes it, that's okay. Cause I did it to grow my skill set and stuff like that, you know? So yeah, I could absolutely like this. I mean, this is great. But the great thing about this is that if we wanted to, what we can do is we can take this bold type, make like a fake poster really quickly. And because I do so many vibrant colors, flower ipsum, Carol, you're brilliant. Flower ipsum would be great. But because I always do like, you know, like this would be like a normal color that I'd probably use. And I'd probably do like some crazy stack of, let me actually show you what I would probably typically do. I'd probably do something like this, I'll grab this, and then I'll grab this. Uh, I'm going to adjust the tight color. Boom, pow. I'm going to click the white end here, and now I have the text box editor. So if I was to like, you know, I'll just cut it. Thank you. So yeah, I'm all about like this stuff. Like, all right, I'm wider, better. Let's make it wider even more. You know, like we can get wonky with it. So I'd probably do something like that. And then I'd probably throw in like, uh, thank you, Tim. Thank you for that copy, I needed that. Maybe that was the brand name it should have been, Floor Mipsum. You guys are too smart. Ah. The Sneezeweed. Sneezeweed would be a great band name. All right, let's bump it up. Bump, 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 bump. I'm gonna take my paragraph up here. Just hide the hyphenation. Bump, 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 bump. All right, so like that would be my typical probably approach. And that's like, it's cool, it's fine. Maybe I need. I need to bump this text bounding box out so the form is on one line. But knowing that, like, I don't necessarily want to do that for this project, right? So what we can do is contrast that with what I want to do for this project, which kind of flips the script on what I normally do. And I'll go in and I'll probably choose more of like, um, probably like a muted downplayed color. I can do something like that. Let's grab, I've got some mock-up, sorry. Some stock photos I got from Unsplash. You can also use Adobe Stock. You can use Adobe Stock to grab your images, but I knew that uh, Unsplash would have some like artsy style photos. But like I can start playing with this color and maybe bring it in and be like, uh, Maybe this needs to be not orange. So we can still use the like bold type, but probably want to pair it with a uh, Oh, 
Oh, I lost the uh, little bit. So I'm pressing I to grab the background color really quickly. Just boom, boom, period. What we can also do is like do variable typefaces throughout this. So let's form ipsum, and then this guy gets a little bit bumped down. But then this starts to look a little bit wonky by itself. So it can still be there. Maybe this needs to be. Love the burgundy, y'all. Yes. Good. <laughs> as long as Sean is happy. So, like, we start contrasting it. So this is what like a poster could look like. You know, it's like get a little bit more, less heavy, more into like kind of weird. Uh, like you know, so. I don't know. We we have a lot of with the variable typeface. We have so much we can do with it. So let me actually just bump that down. Then I actually cool. So now it feels like maybe there's like a. What is it called? The charts that you typically see in like a botanist book or whatever. Maybe it feels like a table or a note or whatever. Instead of black, try bright yellow and see. Not all clients do that. What am I missing? Add the scent of flowers to the darkness of your life. Oh my goodness, that'd be a great business card. You actually have a candle business. This is perfect. Jack of all trades here. Nice, that's awesome, yeah. Like that's the thing. Like this, that was kind of like what inspired me originally. I was like, it's like, okay, I want to do a candle kind of company thing like that. But what I actually really want to do is contrast what I normally do with the photos, which are very bright, and I want to do like those old artistic, uh, like still life paintings. So like a darker motif, kind of like this image. Or let me see here, like here, like something that's a little bit darker in the colors. Very very dark. So anyways, so we're running out of time. So we've got about 15 minutes left. Uh, so let's make a pattern really quickly. So I'm gonna take this logo and we can do kind of the like Louis Vuitton approach where we just take this. I'm gonna take the selection, I'm gonna group it. And then what I'm gonna do is actually do a pattern make. And then I get to control. So this is kind of like, <laughs> you can make your own little Dior logo by doing this just by repeating it constantly. <coughs> But this is a little too heavy right now. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually, you can experiment by changing the, the way that the tiling type goes. It's kind of interesting. And maybe that's okay. Maybe, I mean, the great thing about this is we can just experiment and see. Uh, we can just keep things pretty loosey-goosey. Uh, let's see here, I'm just trying to 80. Will that work? Okay, so I want to try to see if I can get the footing to be on, so maybe 79. It's too much. Uh, 79.5. Will that work? Oh, cool. Okay, it does. All right. Uh, and 65. Let me see here. Width. Do I want it to be closer? All right, so I'm gonna do PF1 is the name of this. So that's an option. So really quickly, I love making patterns, especially like, it's such a great way of adding details to your project. So, so what I'm gonna do is fill this and it goes into your like color swatch section. So we've got different options here. We'll just, oops. What I'm gonna do is actually bump these up. I'm gonna move these over here. Fill that, boom. So we got busy, busy pattern there. And then I'm gonna do another one, file, make. Uh, object pattern, make. Uh, 
and then I'm gonna see what it looks like by just making the like much further out right so if we do a three by three now it's a lot smaller this is where like like if you were doing your like candle business this could work really well how can you adjust your font like this I don't see the tool anymore anywhere what do you mean I am not currently uh, working with live type currently uh, but if you ever lose your type mine was hiding behind the swatches button uh, but if you lose it like if it goes away you just press command T and it'll bring back up the uh, the type tool section so you'll always have it in here you see are you talking about the variable typeface so right now, if these are these are outline versions, so you can't adjust the type anymore. But there are certain certain fonts that aren't variable. Like if I typed in uh, like Open Sans, which is available on Google, uh, you're not going to see a variable typeface button up here. You just have kind of your normal type sizes and like uh, weights. But like with the variable typeface it gives you that custom variable stuff so it's important if you're looking for a variable typeface that you find one that is actually variable and then also whenever you're looking at like myfonts.com or adobe fonts and stuff to find one uh just like look make sure that it is actually variable some say they're variable but they got from like extra bold just down to bold and while that's fine it just might not give you what you want Whenever you see patterns, it reminds you of your pajamas. That's true. It'd look good. But I mean, who doesn't want one of these as a pajama pattern? Yeah, I know. All right, so we've got those. We didn't make a flower yet. I think that would probably take a little bit too long. But what we can look at is we've got these elements here. Uh, since we only have an hour today total, uh, we'll probably just take this beautiful little square. We'll make a simple pattern for that. Do uh, pattern make object pattern make and then so this is gonna be way too heavy. So again, probably do something like three inches, three inches, three inches. Boom, pow. That's too far now. So maybe I'll just do like one inch. That's like a little too uh, because the grid pattern just goes kind of up and down it's not gonna give me what I want so I think I might do like a hex by column hex by row actually it will get me a nice little looking pattern and you can see this being used in like business cards uh, collateral like if we wanted to we can actually me actually just make this 0.5 by 0.5 all right so if we wanted to, we could take this little like poster real quick. And then what I'm gonna do uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post this back. Actually command F. Command F so it goes on top of the background here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this background with that new pattern we just got. And we can adjust these colors if we wanted to. We could bring it into like Photoshop or whatever. Let me see, actually. I want to see what this looks like. We can start throwing it into like Photoshop, Smart Object. And then we can just kind of pull it. But I'm gonna add a layer mask on top of this. I know we're in, we're working in Illustrator today, but it's cool to like see what your your projects can look like in Photoshop. Alright, so what I'm going to do is actually just even color overlay, probably just add like a small little 
Maybe I'll try to bring in that burgundy from earlier. Maybe I'll back to Illustrator, boom, bow. Grab that, bring it into Photoshop, double click on that, paste it in. So you can see like this could work for like a header maybe. And then bring the, uh, the monogram down actually. And then bring down the tight. And then what I'm actually going to do is, because it's kind of a blown out piece of paper, I'll probably just lower that down and then change the mask really quickly. Just sorry, I'm just going to, oh, it's hardness up. So you can kind of see how, like, you can start leveraging your patterns throughout all these elements. Am I going to make a color palette? I am going to make a color palette. We can probably just make one right now. Uh, we've only got, like, four minutes left. So very, very quickly, I'll start it. Uh, we'll do that tomorrow. So tomorrow, we're going to go through how to pre start prepping this for client briefings. I'll have a couple mockups already done for y'all. And I will hopefully have a downloadable file for you guys to see kind of a brand booklet in kind of live world. Uh, hopefully, you can download it. I'll try to get all that set up by tomorrow. If not, I'll show you guys just how to make it. We'll go over color palettes and all that good stuff. So color palettes are a little bit complicated. I kind of want to keep this, the type and the color kind of, I'm all about kind of making systems that are scalable, right? And if, if a color palette from a photo requires me to like kind of contrast it. So if I like pulled in this beautiful blue color, blue uh, flowers, I want to be able to have a system that can represent it, right? Rather than just doing this like kind of blue behind it. I mean, the burgundy actually kind of looks good with it. So maybe after everything's, maybe that's fine. But I like to like leave color to be flexible because this is kind of like an organic and creative business already. I get it for like corporations need to be like more dialed. Like part of me wants that. That's kind of crazy fun. Uh, so we're gonna just see. Yeah, we'll save the color for tomorrow. I'll go through how I build it all. Dimension for final mockups. I probably won't be doing dimension for final mockups for this. I will actually, if I like the ending direction for this, I will actually do what I do with all my projects and do a like a photo shoot. So I want to kind of like bring this into like kind of this level of fidelity, where this started off as like just mock-ups and dimension and then bring it actually into like a photo shoot. Uh, so I kind of want to bring that to kind of like the final bit. Uh, and so I'm going to try to work on like a still life photography shoot for it, but that is a great idea, Carol. Um, I don't know, I think, I think I'll probably just use Photoshop mock-ups tomorrow for this stuff and then bring it into Illustrator to bring it all together. Uh, so today kind of, You've got a crazy schedule ahead of you with really, really talented people. Uh, Jason Levine's next. Rudy Val is coming up at nine o'clock. You don't want to miss her. She's amazing. And I don't know how she gets through her work so fast with the creative challenges, but she's brilliant. Uh, Rihanna's later, Julia, Pablo, Peter, and designing out the, designing in the dark finishes out with Andrew Hawk Rattle. Uh, so that's gonna be a great, great Monday to get your week started. I know you guys will be amped. You guys are gonna have a great time with it. Uh, but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. It's a lot of fun. Tomorrow we're gonna go through all the design booklet stuff, the brand stuff, try to build guidelines really, really quickly. We only have an hour tomorrow again, so we're just gonna fly through this stuff. Color palette, I'll show you kind of tips and tricks that I have on kind of building a unified kind of color system. And you guys will be great. You know, set up, everything will be happy and ready to go. Carol says Dimension is your new favorite app. It does way more than mockups. That's true. Uh, it absolutely does do a lot more than mockups, but I like to do things that are a little bit more reliant on Photoshop and photography, I think, sometimes. But thank you guys. Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a great rest of your day, a great start to your week. 
See y'all later.